Hello, this is Stuart Bray back again with part two of this video series looking at the making of a master mold of a plaster head. Um, we left off with the last video having just uh, fiberglass the back half of the head only, um, leaving the face ready to mold. And the back half is, is just fiberglass as it's a smooth shape with no real detail. So it makes sense to save money by using less silicon. If we did the whole head in silicon, it would use more material. So this is a good way of, of, of achieving a good mold um, without using quite so much silicon. Now the first thing to do is to protect the face with some tissue just like we did in the last time and this is really easily uh, done you just push it into place with a wet sponge and the nice thing is it sits securely in place on that plaster face too. I want to make sure that the, the mold stays secure so what I'm going to do is drill three small pilot holes through the glass and into the base so that I can screw it into place um, and doing this allows me to then lay the head on its back um, and it makes it easier to work on so I'm not fighting gravity that way. Um, and I can be confident that the head and the mold are gonna stay in the right place throughout the whole process. Now, as I'm gonna be placing water-based clay on this surface, I want to use a plastic food wrap or a cling film over the tissued plaster as a further precaution. And what this will do is it stops the moisture in the clay, because it's water clay, uh, from being sucked out by the dry plaster head underneath. And once I've done the plastic and it's on, I cut one and a half inch wide strips of clay, which I've sliced um, from half inch slabs using the clay cutter that I showed you in the first video. If you remember, I had a, a clay cutter to cut the uh, nice even slices of clay. Now I place these around the edge and I want them to touch the head, but keep back from the edge of the fiberglass wall that it's sitting on because I'm gonna need that later for, for drilling and bolting, which you'll see. And then I start placing large slabs of clay the sliced clay hole onto the head, making sure to press it gently into place. And what I want to do is to follow the contours of the head um, as much as I can, but I don't want to push so hard on the clay that it actually squeezes the clay down and makes it thin in areas. Uh, and I want to make sure the clay covers everywhere. And so you can cut it or bend the clay to fit any gaps that you may have. And because clay is soft, it's very easy to pop it into any gap that you've left and just smooth it out. Now I actually placed a little extra clay um, on the nose because the nose sticks out from the face and it's very easy to inadvertently sort of wipe it and press too hard over time and um, you can make it very very thin on the tip of the nose accidentally without realizing so I added a little extra here to sort of uh, you know counteract that. And once all the clay is on I'm going to use a serrated kidney like this this is just a very simple kidney tool you get from like a pottery suppliers um, and the serrations make it very easy to scratch over the surface lightly like this um, and by scraping and dragging this over the clay it takes out any bumps you don't need to press hard uh, you let the teeth of the kidney do all the work but it just takes out the worst of the bumps and leaves you a much more even although textured but it's quite an even surface if you find any small gaps, then you can fill and neaten them with a small tool as you go along. And once I've done that, I used a rubber kidney like this to then smooth the surface out completely. Now this stuff, this works really well, this tool. Uh, it makes a nice job of giving you a smooth surface over most of the clay. Um, if you've got any hard to reach areas, you can also use a damp sponge to get a completely perfect smooth finish over the top. And once the surface is all smooth, I place on strips of clay that are about half inch square on top of the edge, making sure that they stay. So you need to press them fairly hard to make them stick there. Any gaps that you create this way, you want to fill them as you go. So you create a neat low wall like this all the way around the edge. And this will act as a key to locate the silicon in its jacket later. Once the edge has a key all the way round, I placed a few bigger keys on the head to help the silicon locate better. It's easy to go crazy and add lots and lots of crisscrossing keys on the front, but remember, you're going to have to fiberglass over all of this, and that's going to take a lot of work. So I put a few keys on and keep it simple. Now, if I fiberglass this clay as one piece, it's going to be tricky to get the mold apart later. So what I'm going to do is make this front half in two separate halves. And to do this, I'm not going to use clay like we used for a wall on the back half. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use shim, which is a very thin metal sheeting uh, that's cut into strips. And I cut the strip. The, stri the roll is sort of four inches wide. And I cut them into two inch strips and then push them into the clay down the middle to create a dividing wall very quickly. And I use parcel tape to strengthen it so that each piece is stuck to the other piece. Some people use super glue, but I think it's easier to use tape. 
and I place it in the middle of this central key where the clay is at its thickest. Be very careful when you're using this stuff to not cut yourself on the sharp edges, it's very very easy to do. So I release this shim wall and the clay using a spray wax and then I dry it using a blow dryer so it's ready for gel coating. The gel coat is mixed and applied just as we did before in the first video. Um, if you remember I added a little extra catalyst to compensate for the cool and damp clay which if I didn't put that in would take longer to go off. And now we have these clay keys there are some deep areas which need to be carefully gel coated to make sure that we don't get any air bubbles trapped down there so make sure the deep areas are done first. So once the gel coat's all over and it's, it's set up, I sprinkle some of the loose chopped strands over the surface, taking care to get it everywhere. Again, you want to fight gravity and get it up the sides. You may even have to sort of tilt the head back upright to get in some areas and then lay it back down flat again. The first job is, as before, is to wet out all these chopped strands and make sure that there's no dry glass strands left on this surface. Then I put the first layer of glass over the keys and the edges, and I do that first. Um, getting the glass to sit over these raised areas and the angles is harder than on a flat surface, so it makes sense to do these areas first. I put two layers over the whole thing and a third layer on the edges, just for strength. It, if it's possible, it's always nice to add a tissue layer if you can. Um, this will minimize the amount of random bits of glass which may stick up and become sharp needles when all this has become solid when it sets. I green trim the glass as soon as possible. It's, it's firm enough to trim, but it's not so far gone that you can't cut it by hand. If it's set too much, then you're going to have to use a saw. Once the edge is trimmed, I need to carefully pull out the shim wall. Now it's possible that you could just leave the shim in and glass the other side, but I prefer to remove it. So I'm going to use a pair of pliers to pull it out and just be very careful again here to not cut yourself when doing this because the edges of that shim are very sharp. Any damage to the clay, like I've done here, this can easily be repaired. Now I need to release the exposed fiberglass wall that we've left, and also the clay, so the gel coat will release easily from them. And I'm going to use a, a liquid wax here with a brush, and then dry it with a blow dryer. And then when that's dry, as an extra precaution, I'm also going to give it a spray of wax, a coat of spray wax, just to be sure. And when this is dry, it's time for the last gel coat on this mold. And as ever, just be mindful of recesses and deep areas and make sure you get the gel coat right to the edge of the mold. Once the gel coat is set up enough, the chop strands go on and it, it may be necessary to tilt the head again to, to get it everywhere to get an even covering. Um, and then it's time for the laminating resin. Again, it gets worked into the chop strand first and creates a nice layer to put the strips of wetted out glass onto. And as before, I take care of the tricky areas first with a the layer, then hit the whole surface, two layers all over, a third on the edge. And once the tissue goes on, I leave it for 10 minutes. And while it's set up enough, I, it allows me to green trim it just like before. So once I've trimmed it, I'm going to leave the mold overnight to harden up properly. Um, once it's hardened up, it's a good idea to give the surface a once over with some wet or dry sanding paper, uh, which you can use with lots and lots of water. And what this does is it gets rid of any missed sort of spikes of glass and makes the mold much nicer to handle. And if you use it with water, it just minimizes the amount of dust. So once I've sanded it down and it's nice and smooth on the surface and the edges, um, and before I open this up, I just need to drill the holes because I'm going to use bolts. Um, later on to hold this mold together so I need to drill the holes now so that they line up. Um, I usually use six millimeter hex head bolts with wing nuts uh, like these um, and they make it very easy to sort of uh, tighten up uh, with by hand or with a tool. So I need to drill a series of six millimeter holes uh, through the flange at regular intervals. So it's important to use extraction and appropriate uh, protective gear uh, to prevent the fiberglass dust from being inhaled. You don't want to cut or sand fiberglass unless you have a workshop extractor and protective clothing and a respirator. It's very dangerous stuff to be working with, so don't do it if you don't have the right stuff. I also want to neaten these edges. Um, they're a little bit rough from the green trimming, um, so what I'm going to use is this, which is a power file. It's like a small belt sander, and it's ideal for this job because it gets around corners and in, in nooks and crannies. And again, I'm using a, a workshop extractor, like a little vacuum cleaner here, as well as a, a workshop room extractor. I need to make sure that I keep the dust down. After this, I want to wash the mold down with water to get rid of any dust that's remained on the surface. Um, and the fiberglassing for this mold is now completely finished. So now we're ready for the final part of this process, which I will show you in the next and final video of this series. As always, if you have any questions, then please do drop me a comment in the box below, or you can do it on the blog. Or if you want to, you can email me directly at my email address, which is mail at learnprostheticmakeup.com. 
and also be sure to get a free workbook of this video by clicking on the download link below. Thanks for watching.